When we started the Ingnava's African Genome Challenge, we were confident that researchers in Africa have great projects and we never doubted receiving interesting and well thought submissions, as we have. We are now in the voting stages of the competition and we will share how the process will unfold at the end of the video. It's time to get those campaigns going. All videos received will be shared on our YouTube channel under the different categories, which are vertebrates, invertebrates and microbes, metagenomics, plants, East Africa and West Africa. We encourage viewers to watch all the videos, then you can vote to choose which one you think is best to win under the respective category. From East to West Africa, researchers in this region have done exceptionally well to capture their projects in the given time. We are very excited to give you the following submissions from the category West Africa. Enjoy. Hello, I'm Dr. Christian Ogelbo from the Department of Animal and Environmental Biology, Federal University, Oyekiti, Nigeria. Legumes are important sources of plant proteins, and a lot of legumes such as cowpea, kidney beans, honey beans, and so on, help to alleviate malnutrition in a lot of countries in West Africa and in Sub-Saharan Africa. Countries like Nigeria and Niger grow a lot of cowpea and contribute about 70% of world cowpea production. Growth of legumes such as cowpea and soybeans is being threatened by the legume pot borer Maruka vitrata. This pot borer destroys a lot of the legumes causing sometimes up to 80% yield loss. In this proposal, we want to sequence the genome of Maroka vitrata. Such genomic information will be vital to understand the biology of this insect and help to fashion out ways to better control and manage it. Thank you. Hello, fellow African scientists. We are proposing to sequence seven exotic African plants with chemotherapeutic and staining properties. The search for plants with antimicrobial properties have gained increasing importance due to a growing number of resistant microorganisms to available antimicrobial agents. In addition, discovery of new potent drugs from plants for other chemotherapeutic purposes, such as cancer, is gaining tremendous attention. Current stains used in our laboratories are chemically synthesized. Besides being expensive, they are hazardous to human health as some dye components are carcinogenic. We have identified seven African plants with great chemotherapeutic potentials and staining properties based on preliminary studies from our research group. At the moment, there are no genome database for African plants, and we know that Africa is endowed with great biodiversity. Understanding the full genetic makeup and capabilities of these plants would enable African biomedical scientists to carry out targeted investigation based on the genome sequence of these plants, which we now propose to determine. In terms of international significance, there will be an interest in assessing the genome sequence of these African plants with potential medical and industrial applications once we deposit them in the global genome database, and they will add more knowledge to the scientific community on what African biodiversity can offer to the world. In Quaba Biotech, we are be utilizing high fire pack bio sequencing technology in making a bold statement that Africa is now ready to join the plant genomic market, which has been estimated to reach 11.7 billion US dollars by 2025. Good day, everyone. I am Katrin Bola Akimulia, an assistant lecturer in the Department of Animal and Environmental Biology. Federal University Oyegiti, Nigeria. The African catfish, Clias guarapinos, is the most important catfish in fisheries and aquaculture in sub Saharan Africa. It provides, it's a rich source of lean animal protein and provides omega 3 fatty acids. It also provides em employment and a source of income for, for fish farmers in sub Saharan Africa. In this project, we seek to sequence the genome of uh, the African catfish. In order to obtain data that will facilitate better understanding of its biology, boost aquaculture, and improve the livelihood of fish farmers in sub-Saharan Africa. 
information information on availability of data of bio of um, biotechnology data will op will make us better understand the biology and genetics of the African catfish and open up the catfish to biotechnology, which will provide biotechnological improvements and reduce the challenges of catfish in sub-Saharan Africa. Thank you. Good day, I am Ken Deashujo. Poultry production in Africa is concentrated mostly in the rural areas, which utilize extensive systems of production. Though chickens are the most common poultry birds, commercial breeds perform poorly in these extensive systems and indigenous local chickens are adapted for survival rather than production. The guinea fowl is a non-conventional poultry species that is hardy, resistant to many diseases, good at converting low quality feed into meat and genetically adapted better to the climes of tropical Africa. With its more delicious and nutritious meat, the guinea fowl is a better and more sustainable option for rural rearers than the chicken in Africa. The long-term goal of this project is to develop improved guinea fowl lines with much better meat and egg producing levels which will still be superior to chickens as far as survival in Africa's biosphere is concerned. To this end, we lay the first steps of bringing more sustainable poultry protein to African populations by characterizing guinea fowls using whole genome sequencing. This will create a much needed framework on which we can build more effective improvement programs to develop more productive guinea fowl lines and mitigate the problem of malnutrition in Africa. Thank you. My name is Adewale Awoyemi and I work at the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, Ibadan, Nigeria, as the manager of the Forest Center. I'm making this entry for the Ibadan Malimbe, Malimbos Ibadanensis, which is a small weaver bed that is restricted to forest patches in southwest Nigeria. So the Ibadan Malimbe can only be found in forest patches around the Ibadan in Nigeria and no other places around the world. Due to its rarity, we only know little about uh, the Badamalimbe and uh, um, the little studies are mainly on uh, taxonomic and behavioral study, uh, knowing the impact of forest fragmentation on its population density and knowing a little about uh, uh, its breeding ecology, but then we know practically little or nothing about the molecular ecology of this species. For instance, since this study has shown that forest fragmentation actually affects the population density of Ibadan Malembe, we will expect the effect of forest fragmentation or isolation distance as well on the genetic diversity of the Ibadan Malembe. And that's why I'm appealing for support so that uh, we can get a uh, little grant to, to, to pursue this study, to collect specimens and uh, uh, investigate the molecular ecology of this species and shed more light on uh, this rare uh, species, which is a treasure to Nigeria, which can only be found in this country. Thank you. My name is Murtera Mahir. I'm working on the role of microbiota in the pathogenesis of Pest de Petit's rumina in West African dwarf goat. Pest de Petit's rumina, PPR, is uh, a highly contagious viral disease of small ruminants. The current uh, control measure is through vaccination and uh, significant sources have not been achieved through this because uh, the inability, because of the inability of the farmers, particularly in the developing countries, to maintain cold chain require for the viability of this uh, vaccine and that is the reason why the uh, better alternative and uh, affordable uh, alternatives should be provided biota transfer therapy have been you know study investigated against some other viral disease and it works for them and that is exactly what we actually want to do with PPR. So we want to look at, first of all, look at the association between these, uh, the, the microbiota composition and diversity, as well as uh, look at the viral loads in the, 
in the infected animal and also in the control animal with that we'll be able to ascertain that the form of association be that we could have between the microbiota as uh, i mean species of uh, microbi uh, microbiota and uh, ppr as a pathogen thank you very much My name is Chiebuka. This is Justicia Kane, popularly known as Blood of Jesus in Nigeria, and it's relative Justicia Seconda. These plants are used in treating anemia locally, and they are highly, highly, highly good for just treatment. There are the most drugs out there. Nigeria alone records about 1.5 million cases of anemia. Anemia is ravaging early preschool children. Our thoughts are if this plant is sequenced, phytochemical characterized, we could look for drug enhancements or production from its phytochemicals that are characterizing the phytochemicals. This would help to you know, enhance the mechanism for treating anemia. Thank you. For staying with us. Now that you've watched all the videos from our applicants, let's discuss on how you can vote. On the comment section below, we have included the project's names from all our applicants in this insert, so you can simply vote by liking your favorite project. Don't worry, if you missed the project's name, we have also included the video number so you can go double check to see if you voted correctly. This process is open to everyone and we have no limits on the people who can vote for you. You're welcome to invite your colleagues, friends or family to vote for your project, of course, by liking it on our comment section. Voting will be open for the next three weeks and we will announce winners shortly after the closing date and the samples will be collected for sequencing on our Pack Bio system. This has been a lovely journey for the Ingaba Biotech team and we hope you enjoyed it too. We wish you all the best in the Ingaba's Africa Genome Challenge. See you at the winner's table. Goodbye.